Hi, third graders. It's good to see you guys coming back. Today is Wednesday, so it's day three of week 24. So let's go ahead and get started with our problems. So if you notice, the first problem is 70 times 8. Now, if you don't remember, we talked about, it's been a while, but we talked about using the basic fact of 7 times 8 to help us solve for 70 times 8. It would take a really long time to add 70 groups of 8 or 8 groups of 70. So let's talk about how we can use this basic fact to help us with this multiple of 10 fact or factor. Remember, these are called factors. Factors are the numbers that you're multiplying. We're looking for the product. Now, how could I do this using 7 times 8? So my basic fact is 7 times 8. If I didn't know what 7 times 8 was, I could use 5 times 8, which would be 5 rows of 8. Then I could do another 2 rows of 8. And I always like working with 5s because they're just so easy to work with. So what is 5 times 8? If you said 40, you would be correct. So counting by 5s, I say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So I have 40, and another two groups of 8 would be 8 plus 8 is 16. So that tells me I have 56, when I add these together, 56 is going to be my total or my product. That's for 7 times 8. Now, with 70 times 8, I'm multiplying by a multiple of 10, which tells me that I'm going to multiply 56 by 10, which makes my place value 10 times greater. So 6 times 10 would be 60, and 50 times 10 would be 500. So I'm going up one more place value whenever I multiply by 10. So this would be 560. Now, if I did 4 times 80, or 80 times 4, remember you can switch your factors because that's what the order property tells me, I could have two groups of 80, and another two groups of 80. Well, what is 80 plus 80? 160. And two groups of 80 is 160. And 160 and 160, if you said 320, you'd be correct. Now, let's talk about the basic fact. So that's just one way I could solve this, by using 2 times 80 and 2 times 80 to make that four groups of 80. Now, what if I wanted to, let's go back to that idea of the basic fact, which is one factor, which is a single digit by a single digit. So 8 times 4. 8 is a single digit. 4 is a single digit. So my factors are 8 and 4. So 8 times 4, or 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, would be, right, 32. Now, if I did 80 times 4, remember, these, each one of these digits is multiplied by 10. So that means that this 2 becomes 20 when I multiply it by 10. And the 30 becomes 300 when I multiply it by 10. So it goes up one more place value when I multiply by 10. Okay? The next problem is 8 times 7. Or I can use 8 times 7 to help me with 80 times 7. So we just did 7 times 8 up here. This should be the same product, right? Because of the fact that I have seven groups of eight should be the same as eight groups of seven. So this is going to be 56. So again, if I multiply each one of my digits 10 times more, this six becomes 60 and that 50 becomes 500 because I'm multiplying it by 10. So again, 
one shift of the place value over. So if I think about, and let me see if I can grab a marker real quick. If I take this 56 and I multiply it by 10, that tells me that that 6 is going to be in the tens place and that 5 is going to shift to the hundreds place. Okay, so if you can see that, that's going to give you, when you multiply by 10, that's what's going to happen. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and continue. We have, the next problem is asking us, are these equivalent? So remember, equivalent means the same amount of the whole. In this case, we're looking at the shaded part. Is this shaded part of my circle the same amount as this shaded part here? Now, if you look at your circles, you can see that these are one-third parts. So each one of those is one-third. Now, each one of these is one-sixth. Now, if you remember, when we, when we partition thirds into, when we partition those thirds, we get sixth. But let's take a look at what's shaded here. This part here is shaded. Now, is that equivalent to this part right here? This would be the part that's shaded here. Now, is this part the same as this part? Yes, but this is not, that is this piece right here. So these are not equivalent. And the reason that we know that they're not equivalent is because this is going to be 2 sixth, and this is going to be 1, 2, 3 sixth. If I'm looking at it carefully, because I know for every third there should be 2 sixth. And I know that when I compare sixth and sixth, 2 of my sixth is going to be less than 3 of my sixth. So this is actually equal to half, if you didn't notice, because half of my circle is shaded and the other half is not shaded. So 3 6 is actually equal to a half. That's the equivalent fraction. That's in simplest form. So 3 6 in simplest form is a half, and we know that half is definitely greater than a third. So these are not equivalent. So we could say that one-third is not equal to, and that's how you write a not equal to, a three, or excuse me, yeah, three-sixth. And three-sixth is the same as half. So we know that one-third is not equal to half. These are not equal to each other. However, they are I could put a less than symbol here. So one third is less than three sixths, or we could call it half, okay? So we're getting a little bit in more in depth in how we're looking at our fractions. We have to understand that these two sixths are gonna be inside of every one third, okay? Let's take a look at our next one. It says shade the circle to show seven eighths. So each one of these is one eighth of my circle, one of the eight parts. Now I want seven eighths. So if I shade seven eighths, I'm gonna shade one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, seven eighths. Now, seven eighths is just one more eighth from eight eighths. So, this is almost one whole. 
Not quite, but if I had just add one more eighth, then it would be the whole circle would be shaded in. So this is pretty close to one hole. So start thinking about, okay, how close to the one hole are you? Okay, so that's the next one. And actually, Thursday actually has seven eighths on the number line. So keep that in mind also. Remember, you get eighths from your fourths, if you also think about that. Remember, we started with fourths, and each one of these fourths is two eighths. So that's something also to think about also. All right, let's take a look at our word problem. It's talking about Emma. Emma has 50 pictures in a box. And she wants to put an equal number of pictures on each page or on each of the 10 pages of her photo album. How many pictures should she put on each page? So this sounds like you're taking a total, breaking it breaking up those pictures onto your pages, which would be groups. You have 50 pictures. You're going to divide them equally in, onto 10 pages, and they want to know how many are going to be on each page. They're not asking for a total here. That would be multiplication. What they're asking us to do is take this apart, put it into groups, and find out how many is going to be on each page or in each group. So that takes me to the back of our paper. So we are taking the 50 pictures or photos, whatever you want to call them. We're breaking them up onto the 10 pages, which are the groups, and we want to know how many are going to be on each page, excuse me, on each page, so in each group. So number of pictures, pictures, each page. Okay, so now we want to take a look at, if I have 50 pictures, and I'm going to put them each onto 10 pages. There's my groups, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, this is the modeling. Should you have to do this every time? Not if you know your multiplication facts, right? So, if I know my multiplication facts, if I have these 10 pages, but I don't know how many pictures are on each page, but I can know the total, then let's think about how many would be in each group or each page. So number in, on each page. So how many would be in each page or on each page? Well, if I count by twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Well, it can't be 2. So what, do, what can I multiply times 10 to give me 50? 5, right? So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. There's the 50 pictures. I put them all onto 10 pages. So I know that if I take 50 and divide it by 10, I get five on each page. Now I can check using multiplication because these are supposed to match. This is the quotient. The quotient is going to be one of our factors, right? The divisor is going to be one of our factors. The product is going to be our dividend here, okay? So your discussion question for today, Wednesday, in your Wednesday folder, I want you to tell me how many sixths you need to be equivalent to one-third. 
So here's what your discussion question is. They asked us if this was equivalent. We said, no, it's not equivalent. So how many sixths do you need to make one-third equivalent? Okay, that's your discussion today. Put that into your Wednesday discussion for our DMA. Have a great Wednesday, guys. Don't forget, happy numbers and fact fluency today. Have a great day. Bye.